we all take a look at our photo grid component here, you'll see that it also has access to the posts and all of the things. And the reason why this has access to our posts and our comments and, and all of our methods that we created is because previously when we looked at our main component, we did this react.clone element thing. And what this does is it, it will pass down uh, the props from main down to the, the first child. So that's exactly why we're able to access it. Now we want to go ahead and take this photo grid here and we, what we could do is we could say json.stringify and we could pass in this.props.post and you'll say null and give it nothing, give that a save. And you'll see that it will actually just dump all of the, the code on here. And actually if we uh, surround that in a pre tag, you'll see that it will format it just like we are used to. And this is all the posts that we have, but uh, you know that it's probably not a great idea just to, to loop over them right inside of photo grid. We should probably create our own component for that specific one. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, go ahead to your components folder and create a photo.js. And we're going to import react from react. We're going to do const photo equals react.create class. We have a render method and we will export default photo. In this render method, we're going to return a figure tag. And in that figure tag, uh, we are going to give it a class name of grid dash figure. And it also needs a key. We're going to get a couple more things to set in there. But uh, for now, let's just go ahead and say I am a photo. So we'll head back to our photogrid.js and we need to be able to loop over them. And the way that we do that is we'll do, give ourselves two curly brackets and say this dot props because this dot props is all of these things. So we're in photo grid, this dot props and we need posts. So this dot props dot posts dot map. And the reason why we do that is because this dot props dot post is an array right here. We're going to loop over it. And for each one, we're going to return this photo component that we did, right? So it's going to give us the post and the index of where it is. And for that, we're going to use a little arrow function here to return the photo component. Now we don't have that imported just yet. So let's quickly do that. We'll say import photo from photo and that's going to go ahead and grab this figure here. And we got a little bit of an error here. Cannot resolve module photo. Oh, that's because it's a relative one right here. Now when that reruns, we say I am a photo, I'm a photo, I'm a photo. And that's because every single time it will render out whatever we go ahead and put in here. So that's great. There's a couple things we need to pass along to this. First of all, we need to pass down the props to it because if we open up this photo grid, you'll see that we now have all of these photo components, but they don't have access to the actual photo that we want, right? It's it, the photo information is only available here. So how do we pass all that information down? Uh, we can use ES6 spread, say so this dot props. And what that will do is it will pass down all the props to that specific component. So there we go, that just refreshed. And now we have access to, uh, we're gonna need the increment function and uh, a couple of other ones in there. I could just pass down the ones I need, but in this case, I'm just gonna pass them all down to it. Uh, we also need to give it a key. I think if we go to our console here, it's gonna be yelling at us uh, for not using a key properly. There we go. Each child should have a unique key prop. That's because we have so many different photos uh, beside each other and it really doesn't know how to differentiate each one of them. So we're going to give it a key. And as long as it's a unique number, we're in good shape. What is a unique number? Well, we can use the index value that we have right there, as well as we need to also pass it an index value that goes along with it. Um, this might seem a little bit strange. Like, why can't we just use key? Uh, key is used in React and you can't actually access it once we're in the photo. You can't say this dot props dot key. So if you need the actual uh, index of the element, you have to pass it along uh, just like we did right there. Uh, and then finally, we need to say post equals post, and that will pass down the specific information about that post. So I'm going to give that a save. I'm going to uh, open up this and look for one of our single photo elements. So open up the photo grid. So I'm going to grab the first one, and you'll see that now we've got the increment value that we have, and then as well as we have a post value. Inside of that, that's all the good information. You got the caption, the ID, the display source, the ID, and the number of likes for that specific one. So 
Uh, that's great. We, we're pretty much done here at the photo grid. Uh, so I'm going to close that down and we'll open up photo.js and start to actually uh, render all of this on out. Uh, so give ourselves a div with the class of grid photo wrap. And inside of that, we are going to give ourselves a link tag. Why? Because that link right here, actually, we need to import that uh, from React Router. And the like, just like we did up here, the link tag is going to allow us to link to each and every one of them. We'll get that from React Router. And the link tag will take a two prop. It's going to link to view forward slash the post dot code. And we'll see. Let's let's just put something in there right now. So uh, let's just say post dot caption. So we can get it rendered out. Oh, post is not defined. What we have to do is it's normally this dot props dot post and this dot props dot post dot caption and give that a save and uh, that will actually work. Um, but that, that's a real pain to write this dot props every single time. Uh, so what I like to do is just use post and right before my return statement, uh, I'll say const post I comments equals this dot props. And that will create variables called post I and comments that we're all going to use in just a second from this dot props. And then we'll be able to use post.code and post.caption from it. Good. It looks like it's working here. See, this one's lunch. And uh, if I go ahead and click that, you'll see like, oh, wow, our, our routes are, are now kicking in, right? We've got view forward slash BAC. Go back to it. Click on it. You see, every time now we're clicking on one of them, the URL is changing. Why? Because we have React Router to set it up. And if we look at our React Dev Tools here and open up our main component, you'll see that this single right here gets switched to photo grid, click on one of them, switches back to single and so on. You get the point. So uh, what we're going to do now is this is just a little bit of HTML. Feel free to just go ahead and grab this HTML from one of the answer files because um, sometimes it's not super exciting just to watch me write a whole bunch of HTML. Um, but if you'd like to sort of learn along as well as do some of the CSS transitions, um, feel free to, to stay for this part. So inside of this link, I am going to actually give us not the post caption. Uh, we are going to give ourselves an image tag. And the source of that image is going to be post.display underscore src. Why? Because I'm just going to go to one of them. I'm going to go to the photo. I'm going to open up the post. And this is all the information that we want, right? We want the display src. Uh, the alt can be the post.caption. And uh, the class name of that is going to be the grid dash photo. That's just so that it lines up with the, the CSS uh, that we have there. So give that a save. And now we should actually see some photos coming in. Good, good. I'm really happy about that. Um, so that's the link tag closing out. Now we want this sweet animation. When you click one of them, it will animate in this little heart. And the way that that works is with the CSS transition group right from the official React. CSS transition group add on. So uh, go ahead and pop this line into the top of your code. And then we're going to go down right below the link here. And I'm just going to paste it in to show you. I go more into the CSS transition group stuff in my React for Beginners course. So uh, I know many of you already know how this all works. Uh, but sort of the one little uh, gotcha right here is that the key is set to the post.likes. And what that allows us to do is that whenever we have a new number of likes, it's going to animate itself. Uh, in from that initial state, which is kind of cool. Um, that looks good. And what we want to do is go below this and we give ourselves a fig caption. And inside of that, we need a paragraph, which is going to have the post dot caption. And that should then show the actual captions underneath them. Oh, good. Look, they're, they're all being pulled in here and starting to look a little bit like what we're going for here. And then we need the control buttons. And inside of that, you'll give yourself a button with the class of likes. And inside of that, we want a heart. That's just the uh, Unicode heart. And then the number of post dot likes on it, right? So what that should show us is, there we go, the number of likes that uh, are sort of loaded on page load for this one. And then eventually, when we click it, it's going to increment that number of likes. That's what we're going to be doing next. Uh, and then below that, we need a link tag. And that link is going to go to, well, we just did this, view forward slash 
post.code. We just want this to also link uh, right to it. And uh, there's a, a couple little spans that go inside of it just so that we can get the span icon. There's no good comment icon, so we I've made one. So we want a span with a class of comment count. Inside of that, we want a class of speech bubble. Finally, uh, right below that, we want uh, comments of post.code. So what is that doing? Well, let's let's go to one of these right here. So photos, we've got all the comments, but like let's say we're on a specific one like this one right here. We just want B, A, C, Y, et cetera, et cetera, right? So the what we can do here is the photo, we'll say comments dot B, A, C, Y right here, and then it will also give us the link. So comments.postcode, and what we're doing is we're using a ternary operator, which is sort of like a shorthand if statement. If there are comments existing, because not all of my photos uh, have comments that are pre-existing on them, then just go ahead and show exactly that, but with a length on the end. Uh, otherwise, show zero. That means that there's there's no comments been added to that one just yet. So give that a save, and we should now see the number popping up. Good. It's looking good. I think we forgot a class yet. We want to give this link a class name of button, which will inherit all the CSS styles that we're used to. Good. So we've got a number of hearts. We got our number of likes. We click that. It will go over to the single. What we want to do now is actually hook these things up so that when I click on the like button, it's going to increment the number of likes. <laughs>